we take a look at Florida's six different constitutions, which are housed here in the old Capitol. Our guide is retired government professor Daisy Parker Florey, who taught many of Florida's leaders and her classes at Florida State University. Florida's first constitution was written in 1838 at a constitutional convention in St. Joseph, now known as Port St. Joe. It paved the way for admission to the Union, which came in 1845, and it was full of revolutionary fervor. People I have the right to alter or to abolish this Constitution as they see fit. In other words, they've written into this Constitution, which stays on in the Constitution of 61 and 65, the provision that the people have the right of revolution. They really didn't mean it, but it is uh, there. The first Constitution prohibited bankers and ministers of the gospel from holding statewide political office. And if the framers hadn't meant it when they wrote in the right of revolution in 1838, they certainly meant it by the time the Civil War came around. 1861, secession. Yes, this is called a secession constitution by many. As far as the um, federal government's concerned, this constitution never existed. It really was a 38 constitution. <laughs> that they saw still. And in fact, they passed some legislation to get us back into the Union out of which we'd never been. But uh, they did not uh, hesitate to say we had to write a new constitution in order to get back into the Union out of which we'd never been. Well, this didn't really correct any of the, the wrongs of the South or of the state. No, did this it? did not uh, meet the demands that the Reconstruction Act later on called for. But that changed in when, 68? That changes with the 68 Constitution, which is written as a result of the Reconstruction Acts, and which was written by convention here in Tallahassee. And this, in many ways, is one of the most fascinating constitutions we've ever had, the state of Florida. There's no statement in here about the right of revolution. So then why so soon did we go to a new constitution? You mean from 68 to 85? Right. Well, it's a very simple political reason. Reconstruction was over. The uh, federal troops were withdrawn. The Democratic Party wanted to reassert its control of Florida government, and the way to do this was to set up a new constitution. It really was the 85 constitution that guided Florida through most of the 20th century. Yes, and held it back sometimes too, <laughs> and it's guiding. And finally, after years of gnashing of the teeth, uh, a new constitution in 68. Yes, it took us a long time to get this, and um, I think probably it was worth it. Popular initiative that is an individual citizen can uh, start an amendment rolling, or the amendment process rolling. Uh, that has been the provision that has brought us Proposition 1. And yes, it hasn't practice. always been an unmixed blessing yeah. by any matter of means. But that wouldn't have been possible before that, That's right. And uh, it's, as Woodrow Wilson used to say about things of this sort, there are sticks behind the door that you need to have once in a while. The 1968 Constitution also called for an automatic review of its provisions every 20 years by a Constitution Revision Commission. And it can be amended by the legislature at any time, so long as the people approve. So what about this Constitution? Is this a document that can guide us into the 21st century? Yes, it, um, all that we have at the present time, and I doubt very seriously we'll take time to write another one before we hit the 21st century. But certainly with the flexibility we have for revision and with the change in point of view, I think, concerning the power of the governor, I think there's less fear now that every governor wants to be a Huey Long in Florida than there once was. I think we can go into the 21st century.